enjoyed his coaching, but they may have enjoyed his commercial more. Let's give it up for Coach Z, Rich Zabosik. How you doing, Coach? Good, good to see you. Holly, you met her? Good, good. Uh, a lot of people, what was that? My microphone. Oh, okay. All Thank right. you for asking. Television. That's, <laughs> that's, that's great. That's yeah. great. It's Amazing. in my pantyhose right back here, in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing pantyhose? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my legs aren't black like yours. Yeah. These are pantyhose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, let's talk you, there. you might have, I was waiting. I didn't know yeah, this you just joined this conversation. Or not. Yeah, this doesn't rub off. Here, sorry. This doesn't rub off. Uh, coach, you are the uh, former head coach of the UMKC Kangaroos. That I am. We have enjoyed you, though, over the years. With your, I used to listen to your radio show all the time at Lou's Place. You and uh, Danny Klingscale, and uh, also enjoyed your commercials for UMKC. And, and if, you, if you guys ever seen the UMKC commercials where, um, like, he's in the hospital and he's picking out the babies, and he can tell one's <laughs> going to be a basketball player and all that stuff, very funny stuff. But let's talk about how you got fired. <laughs> let's not waste any time here. <laughs> you, invite, the, you invite me on the show, and the first thing you want to know is how I got fired. <laughs> Absolutely. Actually, it was, it was March 13th which is a very historic day, okay. in, in my mind, be, not only because I got fired, because it's my birthday. Oh. So oh. I, I bring up March 13th, I guess we Does have it? about you know, 42 shopping days left to find me a gift, but actually <laughs> last year on March 13th I was fired, which was actually pretty good in, in a lot of ways. You want to tell me how that's good? Well, I, I'm going to try and tell you how it is. <laughs> it actually was good because, number one, I, I ended up writing a book and that's the very first chapter. Happy birthday, you're fired. And, you know, so hopefully it'll sell and people will know I'm out of a job, so it'll help that way. Is this and birds, dogs, and kangaroos? Yes, yes it is. Okay. Yes, it is. Birds, dogs, and kangaroos, okay. life on the back roads of college basketball. Um, the second part is, is I was actually the all-time winningest coach at UMKC. So by firing me, I, I don't have a chance to come back and hurt that record. So, you know, if I'd come back another year, there's a good chance I might not have been the all-time winningest coach anymore. Yeah, so that was, not real good so that was very year. good. So, it, and it's actually been a blessing in disguise for, for a number, number of different reasons. I have a, a son who is a senior in high school who plays basketball for Bishop Miege, go Stags. And uh, it was a situation where I actually get a chance to see him play more this year than, you know, probably combined his entire career. So that's been nice. Um, and it's also given me a chance to do other things. I, I've actually got into the TV business, doing some games for the Big Ten Network as a color analyst. Um, you know, doing some commercials, some TV, some films. We have a Big Ten fan out there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it, it has given me a, a new look uh, or a new lease on life, so to speak. That's awesome. You were very inspirational to your players back when you were at, at UMKC. And you were actually known, there was a story about turning adversity into advantage. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, actually a couple years ago, we started off 0-7. Um, and there were people that thought I should be fired. <laughs> Fortunately, my athletic director let me finish the year. And, and actually, it, it was uh, a kind of a turning point for me. I took my team to see, we were going to play our first conference game against IUPUI. And I took my team to see Flight of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what the movie was about. I, I, I knew Phoenix was a bird that rose from the ashes. I wish I could say I planned all this, but I didn't. And fortunately, we won that game. And we ended up winning 11 in a row, which was very special, obviously, from a team standpoint. But more importantly, from a, from a coaching standpoint, I, I had an opportunity. My parents still live in Cleveland. So they came over for the game uh, in Indianapolis. <laughs> You and, got somebody uh, from Cleveland? <laughs> oh, they, they admit it. I can't believe it. And uh, I had a chance. We're sitting in the hotel room, and, and my father is there, and my father was a high school coach for 20 years. And I said, you know what? Dad, I've never had you in the locker room, never seen a pregame talk, postgame, all that. I want you to ride the bus, come to the game. So he did. And, you know, we won the game. So I'm a very superstitious person. And so we decided, or I decided, I'm flying him out to Kansas City because we're playing on Saturday. I need him to be at that game. You know, I mean, some people may think it was just a goodwill gesture. I'm, I'm all into the basketball gods, so I needed, I needed some karma right there. So he came out. We won the second game. 
Now, we're, we're going to go down to Centenary, which is in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I've told him, you're going to the game. I got a ticket for you, you're going to the game with me. Now, my mother and father have been married for close to 60 years. Wow. So the most embarrassing thing in my life was him talking to my mother on the phone saying, you know, Rich really wants me to go to the game. Can I go? He's <laughs> begging my mother to go to this game. Well, she relents. We go down, we win again. Number three, we come home now and we play one more game. And then he stays. And uh, I had decided if we won that game, I would let him address the team. So as fate would have it, we win the game. So now everybody's gathered around in the locker room. And I turn to my father and say, Dad, I want you to address the team. Now, he had no idea, but I figured, you know, he coached for 20 years. He's got a, the old Newt Rockney speech in there, you know, pull it out of the box, go. So he gets everybody around. And he looks at all the players and says, guys, I've brought you as far as I can. The rest <laughs> is up to you. And the place exploded. And it was, I tell you, as, as a, a son with a chance to give back to his father, it was one of the best moments of my life. And, and a moment that, that he, uh, I know, has talked about to his friends back home. So uh, that was very special. When you talk about turning adversity into advantage, that was an opportunity. Wow. Absolutely. That's a great story. Real quickly, we only have a little bit of time. I want you to tell our people out there one of your best recruiting stories uh, from your days on the road. Oh, uh, well, I, I'll try and squeeze in two quick ones. Number one, I, when I, my very first coaching job, I was at Atlantic Christian College in Wilson, North Carolina, population about 8,000. So it was uh, a challenge. But we found a kid named Mike White, 6'9", 250. I mean, he was an NBA guy, NBA body. Found him in a rec center in Coney Island, New York, in Brooklyn, New York. So we bring Mike down. Now, we got to get him eligible to play. Of course. You know, which was not the easiest thing because, you know, he really wasn't, you know, he was into basketball. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked him, and he had a nickname. Which one? He, he said, Coach, everybody calls me Sweet Meat. No. Mike Sweet Meat White. Now, Sweet Meat? Here's the punchline in the story. <laughs> we never got him eligible. He flunked human Aww. sexuality three times. And he had the nerve to say, Mike Sweet Meat White. Come on, you couldn't even pass human sex. But uh, that probably was one of the most interesting. The, the other one was my very first recruiting visit to a, a somebody's home in, in Virginia, Roanoke, Virginia, actually. And I'm sitting there, and I'm a little nervous. I'm an assistant and trying to give the whole spiel, hey, come to our school, you graduate, great place, all that. Well, there's a bowl of peanuts on a, on a table. So I'm nervous. I start eating. So I got about three quarters of the bowl done. And I look at the kid's mother and I say, ma'am, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm a little nervous. I'm sorry for eating all the peanuts. And she says, oh, don't worry about it, coach. You know, and I'm trying to think of the kid's name. Bill's, Bill's grandmother, she only likes to eat the chocolate coating on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> I had no more peanuts that night. That was probably the worst. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, did it never happen to you, did it? No. I didn't think so. It seemed like you could smell it, though, when you were putting it in your mouth. <laughs> anyway, everybody, let's give it up for Coach Z. <laughs> Got a beautiful and talented Andrea. We'll tell you what's coming up next.